Hey, what's up, folks? Sorry I can't be here live. My name is Chato John. I'm a husband, father, entrepreneur, and tech leader, and I am honored to have this opportunity to talk with you folks today about ethics. When I was asked to talk about ethics, I don't know why I'm saying it like that, but I honestly didn't really uh, feel like I had that much to offer. I'm kind of young and barely figuring it out, and I haven't really been able to live up to any ethical standard for about as long as I can remember. I can give you the definition on Merriam-Webster, Ethics is the discipline of dealing with what is good and bad and with moral duty and obligation. Sounds extreme, and I assume you know what ethics are. You are ethics awards holders. So rather than digging into what ethics are, I want to tell you some stories about unethics. That's not a word, but you catch my drift. So in middle school, I had this soda business where I would buy a bunch of soda cans from the grocery store, bring them to school, and sell them to classmates which I wouldn't call unethical, but then I noticed that the vending machine had cold drinks and I did not. So for me, that was bad for business. So I unplugged that vending machine, slapped an out of order sign in that bad boy and boom, I was the only business in town. That's unethical. It keeps going. In high school, I ended up in a physics class with some upperclassmen and I happened to be okay with physics. I was a model student until I realized that I cared about the approval of uh, the classmates more than I cared about ethics. And when the upperclassmen asked me for answers during the tests, all of a sudden the voice in my head that says, that's cheating, was as quiet as a mouse. That's cheating. And then, just like that, I was answer man, given all the answers and super cool with it. It continues. And I'm, I'm splitting hairs now, but I want to tell this one because my wife, Kelsey, she's like really big into the earth. I mean, I am too. I'm hip. I'm also a human. <laughs> but she's like really into it. So, in recent years, when I've bought things in non-recyclable plastic that I could have avoided, and I didn't want her to know, didn't want her to find out, when I was going to throw it away, I would reach down uh, deep into the bottom of the trash can and stash the plastic like way down there and cover it up uh, with more trash so she wouldn't find out. And that's called a cover-up. It's unethical. And she'd find out anyways because she's detailed and I'm not, so it wasn't even effective. What I'm getting at is I'm not some amazing standard for ethical living or anything like that, and it's important to me to set that stage before you listen to anything I say. I'm a guy with convictions. Ethics are very important to me, and I try and live by those convictions every day, but I fall short and will continue to fall short for the rest of my life, which is normal, by the way. That's part of the human experience. We all fall short. Hopefully, we notice when we fall short, and then we recalibrate so that the next time we're a little bit wiser... But for the rest of this lovely rendezvous with Mr. Che Du, it's pronounced Che Do, I want to orient our crazy ride around one question. Is doing the right thing all that matters? Dramatic pause. Let me tell you a story. So there was once a man with a lot of money, a lot of property, and two sons who lived with him. They were old enough to not live with him, but broke enough to stay there. <laughs> Being the only two sons that this dad had, though, he planned to give them everything he owned eventually but the younger brother he was ready to live the good life now and party 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 be his own man ha, 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 that sort of thing so he said yo pops how about you give me half of what you own right now i'm talking the money the cars everything so his dad was like sure why not and gave the younger brother half of his stuff but as soon as this younger brother had the money he told his dad he was no longer interested in a relationship with him and he left just like that. The younger brother didn't care about the family. He only cared about himself and his family. They were just people for him to use. So he peaced out and went on a spending spree. He was buying all the stuff. But the older brother, the older brother stayed with the dad. He wasn't going anywhere. He wasn't going to leave his dad alone. He was not going to take the money. He was not going to run. He stayed with his dad, took out the trash, walked the dogs, raked the leaves, everything, including the chores his younger brother used to take, um, take care of. The older brother supported his dad, and together the father and the older brother dealt with the heartbreak they felt from the younger brother abandoning their family. Meanwhile, the younger brother had been partying a little too hard. He was running out of cash and found himself homeless. He was so broke that one night he was ready to steal food from pigs he ran across on a farm. Pig food. He finally came to his senses and decided to go back home. He had a lot of pride to put aside, right? He had made a lot of decisions, and he was now dealing with the consequences. But he humbled himself, and he was ready to beg his father for forgiveness and apologize and explain that he knew he had been wrong to act the way he did, and his dad didn't have to treat him like a son ever again, but any help his dad could give him, he would humbly accept. 
So after the long journey, he's walking home and his dad sees him from afar. His dad runs out to him, hugs him, embraces him. And right when the younger brother is getting ready to apologize to the father, his father said, hey, whoa, hey, whoa, whoa, don't worry about any of that. You are my son. I've missed you and you're back. I'm usually not one to be extravagant, but this is cause to celebrate. So tell the neighbors, tell your friends, we're having a cookout in your honor and I'm paying for it. The older brother hears all the fun and the older brother comes outside and sees his younger brother back and sees his dad there hosting the celebration in his younger brother's honor. And the older brother, who had stayed by his dad's side and never asked for anything, got angry. So he tells his dad, meet me in the front now gets his dad out front says yo this whole time while my little brother was partying spending our money and doing no work for the family i was here with you loyal and never once did you do a celebration in my honor i did all the right things and you never once appreciated me so how dare you throw a party for my little brother i deserve better than this and the dad puts his hand on the shoulder of the older brother and he says hey i still love you and all of what I have will still be yours one day. But today we celebrate your brother because now our family is whole again. That's not my story. It's a paraphrase, a retelling of a story from the Bible called the prodigal son. But here's the question again. Is doing the right thing all that matters? No. Not unless you do the right things for the right reasons. See, the younger brother, he did a lot of wrong things, right? And the older brother, he did a lot of right things. But at the end of the day, the older brother was the one who was bitter, prideful, disrespectful, and arrogant, while the younger brother was humble, respectful, and ultimately united with his father. It does not matter how ethical you are if you do the right things, not because you find joy in doing what's right, but rather because you only do what's right when you think you want people to think you're better than them, um, or because you want people to owe you, or you want to get something out of it. Because if that's your motivation for being ethical, then when people don't think you're better than others and when people don't return the favor or when you don't get anything in turn for all of your good behavior, you will end up bitter on the inside, even though you look perfect on the outside. So as you continue throughout your days, I challenge you to not solely focus on doing the right thing. Like the right thing's important, but rather focus on why you want to do the right thing and pay close attention to your motivations. So uh, because we're people and we are more than what we do and what we accomplish, why we do what we do is a huge part of who we are. So as you continue to do amazing things in this world and as you fall short while trying, because you will sometimes, check your heart and ask yourself why you're doing what you're doing because we are human and in here, deep in the heart, that's where the real work happens. Adios.